Ever wondered if that peaceful death scene in movies, where grandma closes her eyes with a gentle smile, is actually what happens? Yeah, me too. And I hate to break it to you, but that's not even close to what your brain actually does in those final moments. Look, we've all been fed this story, right? Death is supposed to be this serene transition, like falling asleep but forever. Your loved ones gather around, you whisper something profound, maybe see a bright light, and then peacefully drift away. It's beautiful, it's comforting, and it's mostly a lie. Here's the thing, scientists recently recorded what actually happens in a dying brain, like they literally had electrodes measuring brain activity as someone passed away. And what they found? Your brain doesn't just shut off like a light switch. It does something absolutely wild. We're talking about brain activity surging to levels that would blow your mind. Gamma waves going crazy. Consciousness potentially continuing after your heart stops beating. And experiences so intense, they make your wildest dreams look boring. And I get it. This sounds scary. But stick with me here. Because understanding what really happens isn't about fear. It's about finally getting answers to questions you've probably wondered about but were too afraid to ask. Like, what are those near-death experiences people talk about? Why do some dementia patients suddenly become lucid right before they die? And what's actually going on when someone seems restless or sees things that aren't there? Over the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through exactly what science has discovered about your brain's final performance. We'll bust the myths that might be causing you unnecessary guilt about how your loved ones passed. And honestly, some of what really happens is way more fascinating than any peaceful fairy tale we've been told. Because your brain, it doesn't go gentle into that good night. It puts on one hell of a show. So if you've ever wondered what really happens in those final moments, or if you just want to understand one of the most profound experiences we'll all face, this is where we separate the comforting lies from the incredible truth. We've all seen it. The hospital room bathed in soft light, family gathered around, maybe some gentle music playing. The dying person whispers their final words of wisdom, squeezes a loved one's hand, and then peacefully drifts away. It's beautiful, isn't it? This narrative exists everywhere, from Hollywood films to religious texts, from Victorian deathbed paintings, to modern hospice brochures. And there's a reason we cling to it. It tells us death isn't scary. It promises dignity, control, even beauty in our final moments. Think about it. Would you rather believe your loved one experienced peace or something else? This myth isn't just comforting. It's psychologically necessary. It helps us cope with the ultimate unknown. But what if the reality is far more complex? and in some ways, even more remarkable. Here's where it gets wild. When scientists finally got to record what happens in a dying brain, and I mean actually record it, electrode by electrode, they discovered something nobody expected. Your brain doesn't fade out like a dimming light bulb. Instead, it puts on what can only be described as a neurological fireworks display. We're talking about gamma waves the same brain activity you have during your most vivid dreams or deepest meditation, suddenly surging to levels we rarely see in living brains. In one groundbreaking case, researchers recorded 900 seconds of brain activity in an 87-year-old patient as his heart stopped. And get this, the gamma activity actually increased after cardiac arrest. Your brain, in its final moments, might be more active than it's been in years. Ever heard someone describe seeing a tunnel of light, meeting deceased relatives, or watching their life flash before their eyes? About 15% of cardiac arrest survivors report these near-death experiences, and science finally has some answers. When your brain is starved of oxygen, it doesn't just shut down. It goes into overdrive. Think of it like your phone using its last 1% battery to send an emergency signal. Your brain floods itself with chemicals natural DMT, massive endorphin releases, all while the visual cortex creates that famous tunnel effect, the temporoparietal junction, the part of your brain that keeps track of where you end and the world begins, starts misfiring. That's why people report floating above their bodies, looking down at themselves. 
These experiences feel more real than real life to those who have them. Nobody talks about this, but the body's final hours rarely match that peaceful movie scene. There's something called the death rattle, a sound that terrifies families, but is actually just mucus in the airways, like intense snoring. The dying person isn't suffering. They're usually unaware of it. Then there's terminal restlessness. Imagine your body's thermostat going haywire. They might pull at blankets one moment, try to get up the next. But here's what's fascinating. Their internal experience might be completely different. Many report vivid visions, seeing deceased relatives, having detailed conversations with people who aren't there. One woman described her mother helping her pack for a journey. The body might look unsettled, but the mind? It could be experiencing something profound we can't even imagine. Imagine your grandmother has had severe Alzheimer's for years. She hasn't recognized you, hasn't spoken clearly, hasn't been herself. Then, hours before death, she suddenly sits up, calls you by name, and has a perfectly lucid conversation about your childhood. This is terminal lucidity, when people with severe brain damage suddenly become themselves again right before death. One man who hadn't spoken in months asked his daughter to forgive him for missing her wedding 30 years ago. A woman with advanced dementia gave detailed instructions about hidden family jewelry. Science can't explain this yet, but it suggests something profound, that consciousness might still be there, waiting. Like a radio signal that suddenly breaks through the static one last time. These moments aren't just coincidences. They're one of death's most fascinating mysteries. Forget what you've heard about the five stages of dying happening in order. The dying brain is more like an emotional DJ randomly switching between tracks. One hour, there's profound peace. Endorphins flooding the system like nature's morphine. The next, there's unexplained agitation. It's not weakness. It's brain chemistry gone wild. As oxygen levels drop, some people experience euphoria, literally getting high on their own brain's emergency chemicals. Others feel intense fear, not of death itself, but because their amygdala is misfiring. One patient described feeling homesick but couldn't explain for where. Another kept trying to finish paperwork from a job they'd left decades ago. Your brain is trying to make sense of an experience it was never designed to process. Let's bust some myths that actually hurt people. First, if you're positive enough, you can delay death. Truth, your attitude doesn't control your biology. Telling someone they're dying because they gave up is cruel and scientifically false. Second, everyone who's meant to die peacefully will. Truth, some deaths involve discomfort that even the best care can't eliminate. This doesn't mean your loved one had a bad death. It means they had a human death. Third, pain medication speeds up death. Truth, proper pain management often extends life by reducing physical stress. Fourth, the soul visibly leaves the body. Truth, real death is messier than movies show. There might be gasping or movements that look distressing, but are just biology at work. Understanding these realities isn't depressing. It's empowering. So what do you do with all this information? First, have real conversations with your family. Tell them, I know death might not look peaceful, and that's okay. What matters is comfort, not appearances. Second, understand that hospice isn't giving up. It's giving your brain the best chance at those profound final experiences. Third, let go of the perfect death narrative. Someone thrashing in bed isn't failing at dying. Their brain is doing exactly what brains do. Fourth, prepare for the unexpected. There might be moments of incredible lucidity or times of confusion. Both are normal. Knowledge isn't just power here. It's peace. Because when you understand what's really happening, you can focus on what truly matters. Being present, ensuring comfort, and accepting death's complex reality. Look, understanding death isn't about destroying hope. It's about replacing comforting myths with fascinating reality. Your brain's final moments aren't a gentle fade to black. 
They're a complex symphony of activity we're just beginning to understand. Those near-death experiences, they're not just stories. They're windows into how our consciousness works. That terminal lucidity, it challenges everything we think we know about brain damage. Even those difficult symptoms we try to hide, they're part of your brain doing its best to process the unprocessable. So next time you hear someone talk about a peaceful passing, remember, the truth isn't scary. It's extraordinary. Because your brain's final performance, it's not just an ending. It's perhaps your mind's most remarkable moment. If you've made it this far, you now understand something profound about death that most people never will. You know that those final moments aren't just about loss. They're about your brain creating one last extraordinary experience. Whether it's the surge of gamma waves, those vivid near-death visions, or those mysterious moments of terminal lucidity, death isn't the simple process we once thought. So next time you hear someone talk about a peaceful passing, you'll know there's so much more to the story. And maybe, just maybe, that knowledge makes death a little less frightening. Because now you understand, your brain's final chapter isn't written in fear or darkness. It's written in an explosion of activity that science is just beginning to understand.